Hello folks, I'm Dave. I'm one of the computer science profs here at VIU. What I want to do today is to walk you through the process of getting an assignment from us through the Git system that we use and submitting that again once you're finished with it. So Git is a version, version control system, but in our department we also use kind of a customized version of that to go through and distribute and collect assignments. So today I want to walk you through a little bit of the theory of that. We'll touch on just some of the very basics of Git as we go, but I'll save most of the gory details of that for another video another day. Um, but we'll go through the theory of how this is all working, and we'll go through some practical examples so you can actually see it in action, and hopefully we get a good idea of what's going on. But first, I'm just going to lose that distracting talking head in the corner there. And... What I want to do, if I can get things set up here properly. So, again, most of our courses use this kind of an approach, use this Git approach to distribute things and collect them afterwards. So, what will happen is when you register in a course, we'll automatically make sure that you get given access to the repositories for that particular course. Now, of course, at the start of a course, there might not be any there, but over the course of the term, they'll get added and you'll automatically have access. The only way that can go wrong is if you happen to register after the um, first day of classes, it might be the case that there's a delay of a couple of days or a few days before you're given access. So if you do register in a course late, then it's usually a good idea just to touch base with the instructor and say, hey, you know, I, I'm... I'm, I've just jo I just joined your course. Um, can you please make sure you add me to any Git repositories just in case? So, assuming we get to that point where you've got access, then what we want to be able to do is start using Git to collect and distribute information. So, what Git is is a version control system. It allows you to keep track of multiple files over the course of time for any given project. So let's say you've got dozens or hundreds of files for a big project somewhere along the line. You're keeping track of multiple versions of it. You're working on it for multiple different platforms. There's a huge amount of information to keep track of there. You know What has changed in which file for which platform in which version at what time? And so Git is a tool that helps us keep track of all of that in a relatively automated fashion. So I'm not going to get into most of the version control details today, but we will get into the use of just some basic Git. So the notion is that your project is all placed in a directory someplace. So you've got one central directory that's got all of your project files in it. There can be as many subdirectories in that as you like, so it doesn't have to be just all in one flat directory but everything is enclosed in this one location. And then there's also going to be a bunch of information that Git puts into that directory so that it can keep track of what's going on, what the different versions look like, what's changed over time. So we'll refer to this as a repository, but again, it's just this one central directory that's got all of your stuff for that project. Now, what's going to happen in terms of the coursework is the instructor is going to create a lab or a project or an assignment. They'll create an initial version of it, and they'll post it on a central department Git server. So this is just the uh, machine someplace that's got all of our Git stuff on it. So the instructor is going to create this repository, post it on this central department server, and what you're going to do is to make a copy of your own on that server. Now, if you like that copy you have on the, the central server is your official state-of-the-art version over the course of time. What's going to happen is you're going to copy that version from the central server into your own account someplace where you can actually work on it, change it, monkey around with it, break things, fix things, add things, make it wonderful. And then eventually when you're happy with it, you'll push, essentially copy your updated version back to the central server. It's the stuff that's on the central server that your instructor is eventually going to look at and mark. So you're creating a copy. The instructor's posting the original. 
you're creating a copy on the central server, you're copying that to your own space to work on, and then eventually pushing it back to your space on the central server. So that's the notion of what's going on behind the scenes. So in terms of actually making that happen, of course, somehow you've got to know what it is you're supposed to be copying originally. So you have to know the name of the repository that the instructor created in the first place. So usually the instructor should tell you. So they'll say, okay, this is for course CSCI 160 and the name of the repository is Lab 1. Or it's for course CSCI 330 and the name of the repository is Project or whatever it might be. So generally speaking, the instructor will tell you. You can also use this SSH command to send a request to the server. So CSCI is just our nickname for the uh, for this central Git server. And then info is the command that says to that server, okay, could you please tell me about all of the different repositories I have access to on your server? So this will come back with a list of all the different things you have access to. So for each of them, it'll tell you the name of the course, uh, the name of the repository, and let's just take a look at that, see what that might actually look like. So I've got this uh, mythical Dave Stu as a student, and we just want to see what Dave Stu has access to. So we say, okay, well, I'm going to send this SSH command to the CSCI Git server, and please tell me what you can. What do I have access to? So it's going to tell me first off about a bunch of things that have been created, different repositories that have been created. In this case, it looks like uh, Dave Stu has access to a bunch of 330 course material. And this is the stuff that Dave Stu can actually get at. So for CSCI 330, it looks like the instructor has created a Lab 1 repository, Lab 2, 3, 4, etc., up through Lab 11. They've created a final exam repository. Uh, they've created a project repository. And they've set up a marking feedback repository as well. So uh, the instructors can set up a special repository for each student where they can push feedback to you. So after the instructor marks your lab, they can send information back to you through this other repository. So, these are the things that I have access to, the 330 Lab 1, 330 Lab 10, etc., etc., etc. So that's what I can get at. Let's go back and start taking a look at what we can do with them now. So I said the first thing we have to do is go off and create our own copy of these things on the central server. So these ones that we were uh, just listing off there, so CSCI 330, that's the instructor copy. And as we'll see in a moment, the ones that are our own duplicates are going to have our username in them. So let's take a look at just setting that up. So to create my copy of something on the central server, I have to send a command to the server saying, please create the copy. So fork is the command that's going to create a duplicate for us. So I'm going to SSH to the server a fork command I'm saying I want to make a copy of a particular repository and I want to put it in my own space is essentially what's happening there. Right? The, uh, and so I want to copy from the instructor version to my own version. And this dollar user variable in the middle is just going to get replaced with my own username. So let's actually give that a try. We'll try creating a duplicate of one of these things on the uh, Dave Stu account. So uh, it looks like I've got access to a bunch of 330 stuff. I'm just going to try Lab 1 here. So I'm going to send an, a fork command to the CSCI server. I want to create a duplicate of CSCI 330 Lab 1, and I want to put it in my space, also calling it Lab 1. So hopefully this goes off and creates a duplicate for me. And yeah, I went off, created this new repository, forked the thing, 
uh, cloned into lab one. So now I've got this duplicate of lab one. And if I do an SSH CSCI info again, hopefully I'll see a new version of lab one in my own space. And dee 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 dee. there, uh, now we see a CSCI 330 Dave Stu lab one. So that's my copy of the instructor's lab one. So now I've got a version on the central server someplace. So next I'm going to have to look at creating a duplicate of that on Otter so I can actually work on this thing. So our next step is to clone a copy of my central server version to my account here to work on it. So we're going to use git, the version control system, say I want to clone a duplicate of my space on the central server. So CSCI, again, I'm sending this git clone from the CSCI server, and I want to grab you know, the course name from my space and the thing I want to get. So in this particular example, I'll be going through and using uh, CSCI 330, dollar user, and lab one. And so let's just take a quick look at what that might actually look like. So um, let's create a CSCI 330 directory so I can put all my CSCI 330 stuff in there. So I'll go into there. And now I want to clone from the CSCI server the course that I want my space and the repository I want. And so this is going to go off and grab whatever was in my space on the central server. And if I take a look, hopefully, yay, it created a lab one there. So let's go in and have a look around. So here is the set of files that the instructor provided in that repository, in the repository that they posted. So this is the initial version. Um, again, ls by default just shows you the, the non-hidden files. If I, just out of curiosity here, if I show the hidden files as well, you'll see that there's also a bunch of Git information in there. So in this is the stuff that, that Git is using to keep track of different versions as things change over time. So. Now what I can do is edit these things to my heart's content. I can add more files to this. And then when I'm eventually done, I'll have to somehow send it back to my space on the central server. So let's uh, work our way along here and see what we've got going on next. Again, the idea is you can make whatever changes you want. And we'll play with this and just make some changes to the files that are there. Once you've changed something, you have to tell Git that you essentially want to add the updated version of that particular file to the collection of things that you're keeping track of. So basically, you make changes and then say, OK, well, I want to add those changes to what I'm keeping track of. When you're done changing files and adding them, then you're going to say, OK, I've reached a point where I'm happy with the current state of this repository. This is a point in the repository that I want to remember. And so this is where commits come in. You say, OK, well, I want, to, I want to create a commit point. I want to create a point that I can come back to if I ever need to. So quite often with your labs and assignments and things, what you're going to wind up doing is finishing up the lab or assignment and then creating an, a commit saying basically, OK, it's done. And when I go to send things back to the server, it's going to send back the most recent committed version. So you have to make your changes. You have to add each file that's changed. You have to do a commit. And then eventually, we're going to have to send the results back. So let's go through and just try that out in the beastie that we came up with here. So I'm just going to go through and make some changes. Maybe I'm going to add a new file. Uh, my new file.ya. 
and whatever it is you want to stick in here anything at all oops any Detroit fans out there so you go through make some changes again you can look at any of these things uh, change them if you want to um, so this is actually from the uh, this particular repository is actually from last semester's CSA 330 course. So make some changes and then for each of the files that I've altered, so let's actually alter the readme just for the sake of altering one more. Um, See how many portal fans we've got out there. Okay, so I've changed a couple of files. I've added a file. I've changed a file. So now I want to go through and add these things so that I can commit, so that I can push this stuff back to the central server. Actually, well, run it. If you ever want to see what the current state of your repository is, you can run a command called git status. And that basically sums up what the state of your repository is right now. So if you take a look, it's gone through and it's noticed that, ooh, your readme has changed and you've added this new file, .yay. And it's telling me that these are untracked files, or at least that the second one is an untracked file. So it's basically highlighting to me the fact that, you know what, if I want these changes included, I better remember to do an add. So let's do that. Right? It actually tells me down here to use a git add. So let's do a git add on the readme, and let's do a git add on the my new file dot yeah, I should have picked a shorter file name. And now if we do a git status, it no longer says they have been modified, but it does now say I've got changes to be committed. So it's pointing out to me that I've done some adds, but not a commit. So let's do a commit, git commit. And this dash m and a bunch of text is just so that I can have some kind of description with my commit, basically saying, what was it that changed in this? So I added my example file played with the readme. You're probably going to come up with a more useful and informative message, but since we haven't done anything real here, uh, the message can be pretty much whatever we want. So the commit runs through and says, OK, I've created a new save point. And again, if we do a git status, now it tells me, right, the it's no longer com complaining about I need to do a commit. But if you notice here, it now tells me that my branch this is my kind of local copy of the code, is ahead of origin master. That's its name for the version on that central server. So I've done a commit since I cloned. So now what I have to do is get these changes, this latest commit, back to the central server. So let's just pop back to our uh, slides here for a second. And push is the git command to essentially send our updates back to that central server, back to the place that we got it from. If you forget to push, the instructor won't see your changes. If you forget to do an add, the instructor won't see your changes. If you forget to do a commit, the instructor won't see your changes. So you have to remember to do your adds, your commit, and your push for everything that you've changed. So. Again, let's uh, go back and give that a quick try. So let's see if we can do a push. And I hope I remembered to set the assignment deadline correctly for this, because if the deadline is passed, it won't let you push. Oh, yeah, yeah I did. Woohoo! So it goes through and it sends stuff back to the server. Uh, gives me a little bit of information about what it set, sent back. Um, it tells you what the deadline is. Oh, look, I actually remembered to change the deadline to something that's uh, later than now. So 
it successfully sent this stuff back to the, the server. So now, if I do my git status, it tells me nothing to commit, the working tree is clean. If you get this message, then basically you know that what you've got locally matches what you've got on the central server, and the instructor will actually see your latest work. So this is the state that we want to be in. So if you're ever feeling nervous about what you have or haven't sent back, do your git status. And if you're coming up with anything other than this nothing to commit working tree is clean, then you've got some changes still to make. All right. What was there that I wanted to wrap up with? Again, you can use the git status. We're looking for that up to date with origin master and we'll get one of those three other messages if anything's going wrong. Now, if you do want more information on this stuff, uh, if you take a look at the link there, so um, our departmental site, my webpage under guides, I've got a gitstudent.html. It's basically just a, a recap of the things that we've gone through today. So if you happen to hit that page, um, again, it goes through pretty much everything that I just did, blah, 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 blah. The one thing that it adds that might be handy is that if something goes wrong and you need to get rid of your local copy or you need to get rid of the version that you created on the central server, it's got a set of instructions in there on how to go about doing that, how to remove the local copy, how to remove the copy on the central server. So if you have to do a little bit of troubleshooting and a little bit of cleanup, there's some extra information there. Okay, um, I think there's also a link at the top of that one to some additional notes on Git. Um, I will post another video in the near future on just some of the basics of Git branching and merging and uh, how you can take advantage of some of the Git features. All right, we'll leave it there. Good luck, folks.